Hello, and welcome to the Oklahoma Venture Forum podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Miller, with my marketing assistant. And today I am joined by Martin Hillen of Weaver Labs. He is going to be speaking at the Oklahoma Venture Forum uh, luncheon on November 13th. And we're here to learn all about you today, Martin. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Lindsay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share a couple of things. Well, tell me, just like, let's start at the beginning. Tell me about Weaver Labs. So, Weaver Labs is a technology company. We commercialize and deliver water technologies that address the global PFAS contamination crisis. Mm -hmm. So, our vision is to create technologies and inspire innovations so that our environment and communities flourish. And there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Um, so, we are a technology company and in the water sector, that means that everything we do, we do this to create a healthier environment and better communities. So, but there's something more there. We're based in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and one of the things I really appreciate um, and really admire is the strong sense of community. And that's also something that we tend to kind of like bring to a national level and maybe even an international level. And we don't want to do this alone. These are very complex problems, problems that we work on and we want to do this with others and inspire others. So that's part of our vision. We're a team of uh, water sector leaders, world-class chemists and proven business builders. So I think we have a lot of expertise to really tackle these complex problems. And you already see these different disciplines in what we do. Yeah, I mean, water I feel like has been in the news more and more and more, um, especially over the last decade. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you all are approaching the water problem. And you mentioned PFAS, and I have no idea what that means. And so I want to know about that too. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe start with PFAS first. Okay. And then um, since I worked uh, in water, most of my career will, will, will probably get there in a second mm -hmm. as well. So PFAS are, uh, it stands for per and polyfluoral alkyl substances. Okay. It's a class of man-made chemicals from the 1940s, and they um, are incredibly water and grease resistant. So they have numerous applications, and this is where you get familiar with it. Um, it's used in anti-stick cookware, like Teflon, water repellent clothing, like Gore-Tex, um, food packaging, uh, pharmaceutical products, and firefighting foam. And because of these, characteristics that it uh, repels or resists water. Um, it, is, it is a very strong material and it's persistent in our environment. They are often called forever chemicals because they don't naturally break down at all. And that means that you nowadays find it everywhere. The contamination is in our water, in our food, and in our bodies. So you and I and the people around us have some PFAS in them. Um, and now studi studies have found that exposure to PFAS is linked to adverse health effects, like um, increased cholesterol levels, autoimmune diseases, and increased ri risk to certain cancers. Um, as a result, the US EPA has set drinking water standards to limit the amount of PFAS in drinking water. As you can see, it spreads via water in your environment and via water you also get it in you. And they ask that cities and utilities, they need to monitor, report, and reduce PFAS in drinking water. So this is a real problem, not only in the US, but also outside of the US. But once you are aware of it, you will start to notice it, you start to notice this on packaging, you start to notice this in headlines. It has been all over the news. Um, and water touches us all. Like often when people talk about the challenges in climate, it's also a water challenge. Mm -hmm. But this is a very, I, I would say it's, the spotlight has been on it for the past few years. And with that recent uh, change in regulation, there is now a urgent need for innovations, for solutions to specifically address this. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Are there certain areas of like the country or the world that are more affected? Like, is it around fresh water more often than salt water, or is it just really everywhere? Um, so it, it is everywhere, mm -hmm. but it, it, the higher the concentrations, the more significant the impact. Okay. Um, so, so like a stream or a river would have potential because it wouldn't have as much of a body to dilute. No, you you see that um, the the higher concentrations are often found at uh, manufacturer sites or, mm -hmm. for example, air force bases, okay. right? Because they've used that firefighting foam for training and for their operations, mm -hmm. and then it spreads. So after these new standards came out, there's maps available, and you you can actually look it up around where you live whether uh, your drinking water meets those meets or exceeds those standards that's right? so idea. that's publicly available um, and you can then take action because there are a lot of things happening in this space right and mm -hmm. that's also where we come in and other companies so there is a lot like the positive news is there's a lot of people working on this mm -hmm and trying to address it and trying to solve this crisis. Yeah, and so how long has Weaver Labs been around working on this? So Weaver Labs has been around for, I guess, seven years now. Okay. Um, it was originally uh, founded by a professor, a chemistry professor of Oklahoma State University, who is an expert at organofluor compounds, organofluor chemis uh, chemistry, and from that company during its its kind of like short-lived tenure, he noticed that PFAS became an issue. And was like, hey, wait, the current technologies, the conventional technologies that are being applied are not suited for this. They're not designed for this challenge. Mm -hmm. So he then set out to design a specific compound, a specific solution for this challenge. So now Weaver Labs and I joined six weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, and, and, and we are now laser focused on making sure that we selectively target PFAS in water. Mm -hmm. We deliver because of that selectivity. So that means that we don't form interactions. We don't bind with other contaminants. There's many contaminants in water and the current strategy is to apply technologies that are used for other contaminants, so they're not that effective. Because of our selectivity, we have far superior removal performance. And on top of that, we have a material that's regenerative. So that's a fancy word for we can use it again. <laughs> and if we can use it again, we bring down cost and complexity of operations. Yeah. So now we have a comprehensive solution that targets all PFAS because it was designed to target PFAS and not other contaminants. That means that we PFAS there's long chain and short chain PFAS. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to see it in a way where the long chain PFAS are actually easier to filter out of water than the short chain. They kind of like go easier through the maze, so to say, if you try to filter. Yeah. However, we target all. So short and long chain. So mm -hmm. a comprehensive superior solution that is regenerative. It makes sense to me. Like I am not a chemist, but it makes Neither sense. Neither am I. By the way. <laughs> Good, we can get along there. But no, it makes sense that you would create a compound that does specifically go after this instead of saying, "Oh yeah, let's just get rid of all contaminants." Because well, you you. There, there is a need to get rid of other contaminants sure. as well. Agreed. But that's already being done. Yeah. And for this particular kind of mm -hmm. challenge, you need a specific solution. Yeah. So we would argue you need a tailored solution. And that's where we come in. Yeah. Makes total sense to me. Absolutely. Okay. So you joined six weeks ago. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but tell me a little bit about your background. So um, as people can probably already hear, I'm not originally from Oklahoma. I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I've worked in water, so I'm a civil engineer, specialized in coastal engineering. So I've worked in water my entire career, a little over 15 years. 
and I started uh, working in Europe, in the Netherlands where I'm from, but I've also worked in Singapore, in Asia, and then eight years ago we moved from Singapore to the US, to Oklahoma. So yeah, I've, and I was responsible to bring a very advanced water technology uh, that was already used on uh, different continents, mainly in Europe, to the US and grow that business. Um, that was a very exciting time. I'm very proud of what we, what we achieved. And then, yeah, not too long ago, a couple of months ago, I was approached by one of my neighbors, essentially one of the people in my network, somebody that I hang out with and run with. And he's like, I, I would love you for you to meet a couple of other people that are doing, trying to get some traction in the water sector and I think you will enjoy what they do. And yeah, from those conversations, I got really excited about making an impact. I've always been driven to make a difference um, and use the knowledge that I have and the experience that I have um, to make an impact for as large a group of people as I can. Uh, water has allowed me to do this, but also this upcoming crisis, this challenge, it's, it, it's really meaningful to make that impact. And I found the same driver in all the people I spoke to, uh, up to the investors, and then it felt like the right time to take on a new challenge. Yeah, that's really exciting. I love that. And I love that you have like spent your career doing this, and then you found this business in Stillwater. Oklahoma, or they found you, right? Um, yeah. After you come to Oklahoma and get to continue your work. Yeah, no, and I, I, I think um, I've been fortunate to work with inspiring leaders in water and business and on, on multiple continents. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 very exciting to see, like that I within even our very small team, we have these different disciplines, and I think working on the interface of different fields, actually that's where innovations happen. I've always enjoyed going like to the edge of my field and, and, and seeing what, what would happen there. You get new insights, you get new ideas, and now I'm learning all about chemistry, but I'm also learning about um, making sure that we build a, a successful business, the right kind of culture, um, and share our vision with the people that we work with. Absolutely. Well, what are some projects that you're working on right now that are exciting to you? Yeah, there, so we're working on a lot of things. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think I can break it down into different components. Like we're, we're doing the things that any business uh, would like to do and, and we're in the midst of raising funds. Mm -hmm. um, I feel we're in a very good position and we need to raise, a, a, raise some funds to have everything that we've demonstrated at lab scale and at third party tested, peer, peer reviewed, to take that uh, to full scale. So apply that and then pilot scale in an actual uh, treatment setting that is quite capital intensive and that takes a little bit of time. And there's a good need that people in the water sector want to see it at scale because sometimes there are certain scaling, uh, some, some issues to bring it to scale. I don't foresee anything for what we do, but we need to take that step. So that's what we're doing first. And then we have like the, the great thing about our technology, our material, is that we can modify it a little bit for different challenges. So we can modify it for different segments of the PFAS challenge, so we can use it for detection and for removal. And we can play even an important part towards the destruction as we selectively uh, target PFAS and it means we get a higher concentration of PFAS so the destruction companies can use less energy to go ahead. So we can do all of that. And we can go across all the different water segments. So drinking water is now being regulated, but it's also in wastewater, it's at military sites, it's in industrial sites. So it's in all kinds of markets. And we can even go beyond. We have some ideas for that. So there's many ideas, but the first few steps are, we're gonna bring it to scale, and we're gonna move it to the first 
clients. We already have an eye on that, and we already have a path to market um, as well. So that will be our core focus, mm. really getting that go-to-market strategy working. And then I, I, I see a lot of room for expansion and a lot of room to grow um, across all these different markets, but also across different geographies. Yeah, I mean, especially with like your background, you've been around in all the geographies. I'm sure you have a lot of contacts and people that you can reach back out to now. Um, who's the first market segment that you're gonna go after? Like, who do you think your first customers will be? Yeah, so we are uh, in, we're establishing partnerships. Mm -hmm. As I said before, this is a very complex problem and I think the right way to approach it is would be with partners. That actually delivers more value to the clients. There's also many parties already involved in delivering solutions to uh, utilities and cities or to anyone in the water sector. Um, via the, via those contacts, we already know of certain clients that are in need for a comprehensive solution. So that means that they just don't want to bring two types of PFAS down to a certain level. They want to get rid of all of it or bring everything to non-detect. That's it. That sounds pretty straightforward because it's actually quite challenging and we can make that difference. So we know specifically who those clients are. That's where we are focusing first. So to make this slightly less cryptic than I just, <laughs> <laughs> just explained it, um, it, it means essentially those uh, cities and utilities that are subject to these drinking water standards that are in need of that comprehensive solution. So we'll start there. We'll deliver it via partners that are already active in this space but lack the technology to do this really, really well. Yeah. And then from there we can scale. So you mentioned like other people in the ecosystem of water that are already like sort of out there doing this. Is the differentiating factor of Weaver Labs that you all are doing those three pieces? You're doing the detect, the oh gosh, what was the middle, and then destruction. What was the second yeah, one? Detection, yeah. removal, and removal, destruction. destruction. So are you one of the only companies that is doing all of those pieces? Um, no, not not necessarily. Okay. I would say the. Um, there's a lot of companies already out there with clients in the water sector, mm -hmm. right? That's where utilities turn first, right? Do you have something that can also help me here? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of large companies out there that are uh, actively pursuing technologies to solve every single thing in the space so that they become, be, can become a one-stop shop. We, our material is really, really good at the detection and removal component we have ideas about destruction, but we're not developing that. There's other companies that are doing that. Um, but what we expect to see in the market is that people are in need to find solutions for all these things. The first moving segments are going to be detection and removal, mm -hmm. and then directly after follows the destruction. We see partnerships on all these different levels in order to get to these clients. I see, so like, because you're so good at the detection and the removal, and you spoke about working with destruction people because you are helping them use less energy, use less of their resources. To set them up for success. To set them up for success. Okay, yeah, I'm understanding that better now. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so when I talk about partnerships, it's really about like who already has those contacts, mm -hmm. but also where can we kind of like shorten our time to market, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of, of it is happening now and there's a need for solutions now. We will demonstrate it, but then we can go via these networks to clients all across the country. Mm -hmm. Establishing those networks would take time, building all that trust would take a lot of time. I think it's more, like the issue is more pressing and it's more beneficial uh, also for us to grow faster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And is there something about this connection to Oklahoma and the university and all of those resources that has like been another way to set you all up for success? Um, yeah, so I spoke a little bit about how that community feel is important to us. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people can relate to that. It's also where we meet all these different 
people with ideas or people that support us or advise us. So there's a lot of people around us already. So that is really great. Uh, we're speaking to a lot of leaders in the field that are actually close to where we live or are actually in the same, same kind of ecosystem, but it goes even it goes even beyond that. So I would say our community is is one of chemistry, where we have excellent contacts. Of entrepreneurship, where we already have serial entrepreneurs in our our team, and of the water sector. Um, there's a lot of contacts that I have from my previous roles that know um, know me, but also know my interests. So yeah, I think the community. Even though we have a great group around us, it's even a much larger community uh, when I think about it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, we knew each other before we were sitting across from each other because yeah. of community um, exactly. and you know, a mutual friend um, that we have and spending time at OSU in the McKnight Center and like Kristen Garcia from The Verge, I've actually said this more than once on the podcast, uh, but she calls Oklahoma like a one coffee or a two coffee cup state. So like you're pretty much like two cups of coffee from meeting anyone that you need to meet. Um, but you know, you never know who you're sitting next to whenever you're um, watching Adina Menzel, for example. And yeah. then you get an yeah. email, I'm like, okay, yeah, we need to connect because it really is that community feel and um, yeah, and I'm sure it's much the same and it's specifically to Stillwater. Oh no, I, I would definitely say that. And people also want you to be successful which is exciting. Mm -hmm. So maybe I do have a quick example of this. Is we, um, second week on the job, uh, we went to a big water conference. It's the leading water event in the US. Um, I set up a, a series of meetings. I took uh, the founder and, and, and the chemistry professor there, um, also to give him a good introduction in the water sector. Yeah. Um, we met with the regulator, US EPA, and we spoke to people that are heavily involved in this and are also excited to see new innovations. So we had m multiple meetings. And then one of, the, one of the people that we spoke to realized that we were from Stillwater. We're like, hey, this is excellent. I actually know all about Stillwater and your mayor and the projects that you have going on. Um, and then you see this is actually a very small world because we are also uh, working with the city of Stillwater because we want to definitely have uh, our solution in place in, in the area where we are based, in the, in the city where we live um, and to make the difference there. And obviously we have very strong ties there. And, um, but it, it, it's so interesting to see that it's such a small world and everybody that is involved in making this a better place or making the city a better place in this case um, yeah already made those connections independent of us mm -hmm. and now we're trying to bring everything together and that actually makes things a lot easier yeah. yeah I love I mean I think I've heard so many people come in here and have this conversation and they always speak about community and how having people around them that want them to succeed is just paramount to um, taking everything to the next level and you know taking a, a new CEO that's been there six weeks and having everyone surround you and want your success. Yeah, and, and maybe for me, like when we moved um, to, to, to Oklahoma, when we moved to Stillwater, people were so excited about the community. Mm -hmm. And as a, since I didn't grow up here, I didn't really understand what that meant, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, it's really hard to pinpoint what exactly is community. Mm -hmm. And I think nowadays, it's, it's the first thing I try to explain if we have visitors. And we've gotten quite some visitors because we are quite enthusiastic. And as you can see, uh, we're still here. Um, I'm very much in this for the long, long run. We have great visions on what the company is going to do. But, um, no, that, that, that sense of community, I think, is really important. It's really a unique aspect that people look out for each other. And then, as a result, I'm also involved in different activities where I'm 
which which makes for a more diverse group of friends than I had in a lot of other places. Absolutely. That's actually very exciting. Yeah. Right. And you have a spouse who's involved in the community, you're raising a child here, yeah. and so I'm sure that does help you meet a whole lot more people. Yes, yes. I think our uh, our social network just grew incredibly <laughs> over the past uh, five years, um, coming out of the pandemic, and it has been incredibly positive. Like we. We essentially grow our circle, which is which is very exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, one of the questions that I love to ask um, anyone who comes in here is, you know, where, where are your big dreams for Weaver Labs? Like, we're sitting here and we're talking in another three or five years. What do you have hoped to have accomplished? So, I think we can demonstrate how efficient and how effective we are, and how much we can outperform what's currently out there. So that's, that's the short run. Then I think we can really scale all across the water sector. So that, that means that when, when I say we're a water technology company, yes, we are. We, and we will kind of build a technology platform, starting out with the technology we have now, where we can make modifications and apply it to all these different segments across all these different sectors, uh, markets, sorry. And then um, we will add technologies to that. So we'll become a water technology company with multiple technologies. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can really see that happening. And mm -hmm. there are so, so many opportunities for us to scale and then scale also geographically, internationally, because these challenges are not limited to any kind of borders or geographic uh, limitations. Mm -hmm. So we will need to bring that to other areas too. Yeah, that sounds like a very exciting future. It is. It is. Yeah. And and I'm I'm very confident that we have the right tools and the right people to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll take a first step first. We'll first define our our niche in that segment that's currently regulated, mm -hmm. and then we'll go and expand. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, what are some things that you hope that our listeners specifically? We'll leave this, you know, recording knowing about Weaver Labs. Um, that is a great question. There, there's, there's, there's many things, but I, I would say that um, there are like great technologies. There are great solutions out there. This is this this has been right under my nose for a couple of years, and I, I didn't see it at, at, at first until I was introduced to it. And then now we have a very small team, we intend to grow that. Um, but in that team, we have very driven people that are experts in their field, that are also true stewards of the environment and really want the best for their community. Mm -hmm. To see those individuals, that is very exciting. I, 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 I hope that it's great to know that these people are around you and that they are, regardless of what your interests are or where you live, trying to make that environment around you and your community a better place. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's a little bit uplifting and then maybe more specifically that they know that there's this challenge out there, but that there are also solutions mm -hmm. and that some people you may know are working on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who are some people in our networks, my network and other people in the Oklahoma Venture Forum that you would like to meet? Is there a a job title? Is there an industry? Is like who are the people that you want to be introduced to? Um, I think uh, at the point, at the current moment, and we're already talking to a lot of people, but mm -hmm. it would be those city leaders and utility leaders that are actively looking for plans to address this, right? Mm -hmm. Because. We want to partner, and we want to partner locally to really speed up this process. So that would be one. Mm -hmm. We're talking already to a lot of uh, VC firms. Um, there may definitely be others out there that hear this and feel like, hey, this is something that we are also very interested in. Um, yeah, then they, it's very easy to find us in that sense. I'll be very happy to talk to all of them. And then I think, um, in the short and medium run, we're looking to hire people that share our views, share our vision, and want to make that difference. 
so that hopefully that won't be too long until we can add some staff to our team. Um, yeah, and I, I, I would be excited to get to meet people that want to work with us. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay, that was that was very actionable steps. So I love that part. Um, okay, my final question is always, you know, what can you, what advice would you give to somebody else in your shoes? Um, who's in the Oklahoma business community or ecosystem and entrepreneurship um, for whenever they follow in your footsteps one day? Yeah, so, well, let's, let's, I just started doing this. <laughs> so, I, no, I, I would say look for those partnerships. It's something that is part of our business model, it's part of our strategy, but I, I think it's also really, really important. You'll be amazed by the people around you. You will be amazed by the talent that's around you, the expertise and the willingness to help. So if you're trying to solve these complex problems, these large, large scale problems, uh, you don't have to do it alone. And even if you have a great solution and a great vision to do it, and you can do most of it by yourself, it would be great if other people are on board with it and can help you or optimize it or push you or challenge you to do it even better. So yeah, not doing it alone and getting these people in, in, involved, that would be something that I can highly recommend. It's something that uh, I think is fun. I'm, um, I've been proven wrong many times um, and I can learn from that because people uh, point it out to me, because I have great people around me. So yeah, I would say, yeah, go, go get these partnerships in, go find these people around you to yeah, make your dreams happen. Oh, that's, that's beautiful sentiment. And I think for entrepreneurs, we feel so alone so often. We don't have to go alone. Have you heard this African proverb? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yep. And so it's yeah. very much like that, right? Like get your community, get your partnerships and um, go further. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I would have said it better. No, <laughs> is it, no, no. But then, no, I, I, I can completely subscribe to that. That makes mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and it's it's one of the things I actually do on a daily basis. It's not uncommon for me to, even if I've not had interactions during the day, doesn't happen too often. But there are days where I try to get things done and I try to just get it done myself. End of the day, I usually pick up the phone and call somebody in our little circle mm -hmm. just to go and reflect on it, to see if I took the right kind of step. So it, that, that's obviously something that I do as a person, but I think you, anyone can find a way to do this. And then, um, yeah, get even more exciting or different or new ideas, yeah? Yeah, I love that, Martin. Well, I thank you so much for joining us today. Um, My pleasure. For everyone who's listening to us on our podcast or watching us on the YouTube channel, Martin will be at our luncheon on November 13th. You don't want to miss it so that you can learn more about Weaver Labs. You can also find more information on their website at weaver-labs.com. Com. I had to double check dot com and learn more about um, Martin and we'll also put a link in there to that publicly available PFAS levels in case you're interested like I am um, so we can all learn more about that. So thank you again for joining us Martin and hopefully we'll see all of you on November 13th.